what is going on everybody this is seven and today i'm going to be doing another obs tutorial um a couple of you have requested this and it's the best streaming settings in streamlabs obs for apex legends um i just released another obs tutorial on the basic obs a couple days ago that will be linked down in the description if you'd like to go watch that also i uh just posted an apex legends video explaining it in basically three minutes it's a summary in my own opinion anyways I'm going to show you guys the best streaming settings for it, whether it's console or PC. Um, you can use these for both, whether it's console or PC, but I'm not going to hold you any longer. This is going to be a really quick video as there's not much to actually go over. I mean, if you're using your PC, it's a little more trial and error, but with console, it's pretty much just these settings will work for you. It, you really shouldn't have an actual problem. All right. So as we are, we're over here in Streamlabs OBS. Um, obviously you need to create a new scene. If you don't know how to create scenes, I'll link a tutorial down below on basic OBS guides. Um, you create your scene, you bring over your, if you're using say Elgato or an HDPVR or an Aver Media, whatever you're using, you're going to choose a video capture device. Um, if you're capturing your PC, um, you're going to go with game capture and you're going to select the window that the game's open in. Um, I'm not going to click either of them because I don't have any of those open right now. My Xbox is off and I'm not currently running a game on my PC. So that's pretty much basically explaining game capture and video capture for that. Um, after that, you're going to go to your settings. You're going to see your output. Uh, but before output, actually, I don't want to forget this, your stream key. Alright, so wherever you're streaming to, whether it's any of these, um, YouTube or Twitch, those are the main ones. You're going to need your stream key, obviously, and how you can get that is you go to your Twitch dashboard and then you go down to channel and then up at the top, it should have your stream key. Uh, you just copy that and then paste it into here. Next, what you're going to want to do, you're going to go over to output. Um, I usually keep this on advanced so I can mess with these, but if you put it on simple, obviously it makes it easier for you. Um, you can't really do a whole lot, so it doesn't really help you per se. Um, uh, don't put your video bitrate on 5,000. I don't know why mine is on 5,000. That doesn't seem right. Um, I usually put it on advanced. It just makes it easier. You can have as many audio tracks as you want, depending on what you have on your computer already. Your encoder. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, please make sure you go with the NVENC. Do not go with software because that is going to use your processor. Unless you have an APU in there that is, you know, capable, very well capable of running it. I don't so i have to go with my nvidia graphics card um if you have an a and b graphics card i don't know what it shows up in the encoder because i don't have an a and b graphics card but make sure that's on nvenc uh uncheck rescale output unless you need to do that it usually nobody needs to use that so just leave that unchecked um if you want if you're going to record with this uh enforce streaming service encoder settings usually you know it it varies really on your computer. I just leave it checked. It doesn't really make a difference for me. My computer can handle it. Your rate control, you're going to put that on CBR. Ah, CBR, uh, constant bitrate, not VBR. That's variable bitrate. You can put it on VBR, but I prefer to use it on CBR. It's just much easier and a lot smoother. Um, you're going to want to do an internet test. And basically, to do that, you go to speedtest.net. And whatever your upload speed is, say it's 25 megabytes a second upload, that's going to be 2,500 in the bitrate. Say if it's 15, it's 1,500. Um, to basically stream 1080p, you're gonna need at least 2500 in the bitrate. Um, if you can't get that with your home internet, say it's too bad, you can rent a VPS server and you can run off of that and get crazy high speeds. You could probably run it at a higher bitrate, but there's really no reason for that. 2500 is perfectly fine to stream 1080p. Um, keyframe interval, I leave at zero. It, I don't really know what that does, to be honest. I just leave that alone. It doesn't really pertain to me all that much um i leave it on the default preset you can put it on high quality i have done that for certain games that the graphics are really bumped up for and are absolutely beautiful other than that i just leave it on default because there's really no need to bump up quality if you're streaming because other people depending on their internet connection and your own it's just going to be kind of choppy in the first place only turn that on if you're going to be recording with Streamlabs, but I use the regular OBS, but everybody's different, so if you're going to be using this, you know, put it on high quality. I'm just going to set it there, why not? Uh, you're going to put the profile on high. You can leave it on main if your computer isn't specifically the best. Um, I use high because it, it just makes the game and the whole stream a lot smoother, and it does bump up the quality. After that, you're going to choose auto level. Um, 
you you can go through these if you really know what they do i don't honestly so i leave it on auto it doesn't really do much um make sure use two pass encoding is on it honestly makes the stream run a lot smoother a uh, gpu you can put that on anything between one and three i usually have it on two sometimes depending on the game i'm playing um if it's not too gpu intensive but leave it on zero if you don't have a strong computer or you just honestly don't care because it's not a huge deal b frames put that on two those are pretty much just it's hard to explain um i'll leave a more in-depth tutorial explaining what those are uh for recording you pretty much set these to whatever you want i have a secondary hard drive that my recording goes to um i leave it on standard well that's the only option here apparently um you can set that to anything you want it uh the bit rate i usually have around 40 to 50 thousand depending on what your computer can handle and high quality presets uh that's all you really need to know when it comes to the recording and streaming part when it comes to audio select your default audio device or you can just leave it on default and it'll just pick up your computer um that's for basically just regular stuff for your mic and auxiliary device i don't know why that's checked set your mic uh your blue snowball your scarlet uh your webcam honestly whatever you have i have the i don't know why my webcam mic isn't showing up anyways you can use your webcam mic or whatever mic you have in there even if it's a built-in computer mic that you're using video make sure if you're streaming in 1080p your base resolution is 1920 by 1080 and your output scale is 1920 by 1080 the downscale filter um have it on 32 samples it makes the colors absolutely beautiful it makes the whole picture look better for your fps type use common you can use fractional um i used to use that but now comments just it's simple you just choose 60 you can do 59.94 it's pretty much the same thing as 60 it just sometimes it has some subtle choppiness to it or you can do it at 30 if your computer can't handle straight 60. for hotkeys um i have these set as the multiply button on my numpad to start recording you can also do it for streaming so say if you're in a game and you don't feel like tabbing out you just hit that on your keyboard and it should start and stop streaming, start and stop recording, so on and so forth. Um, you can also use it to switch between scenes. Uh, that's all you really need to know about hotkeys. It's pretty self-explanatory. Under the advanced tab, uh, process. The higher you have it, the more uh, CPU you're going to be using on your computer. Um, I usually just keep it at normal, that's perfectly fine for me, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Your video, you're going to put on NV12, that's the best one. Um, I mean, you can use it on RGB, but I prefer using NV12. That should be auto-selected anyways. Your color range, I don't know why mine's on 601, you're going to want to put that on 709, and full color range. It just makes the video absolutely pop. And check force GPU's render device, you do not want to use your CPU especially when you're in the middle of the game because it's going to make your stream, your video, and the game stutter all together. Uh, your audio monitor device is... It's just your speakers or your built-in sound card. Whatever you have, I leave that at default and it just picks up whatever's playing. The recording, um, I don't mess with this. I leave this all the same. Stream delay is basically for, you know, you can do things and everybody else won't see it for so many seconds. So say if I were to start a game or start searching... Nobody else would see that for about 20 seconds. That way I can't get stream sniped. That comes in handy if you have a problem getting stream sniped. Other than that, just leave it off. Um, automatically reconnect to say you lose connection or you have a Wi-Fi problem or Ethernet problem. Just internet in general. It cuts out on you while you're recording. It will do its best to automatically reconnect and bring the stream back up. So you don't have to do that manually. It's really helpful. Network. Um, I don't really know what that does. I don't mess with that. Um, I'm assuming low latency mode allows it to just use less bandwidth. I'm, I'm just assuming. Don't hold me to that. I'm not exactly sure. Sources. Um, it's when you have a browser source. Say if you're like doing a stream where you have like a subscriber count. It just allows it to basically run a lot smoother and not use a shit ton of GPU. Well, a CPU, my bad, when you're using it. Um, appearance. Uh, this just helps when you're streaming. Um, you go to your live tab and it obviously shows the donations, everything else up here, um, your subscribers, everything like that. Um, you can change the size of that so it's easier for you to read. Um, that's all you really need to do. Uh, the only thing that really matters when it comes to streaming is your streaming setup. Obviously, your settings here, 
and the video tab and the audio tab that's all you really need to worry about other than that everything else was basically just you know basic common sense stuff to help you out with whatever you don't already know um i hope that helped you guys like i said i'll be linking my previous obs video down below you can go check that out please if this helped drop a comment let me know so i know if i should make more of these if there's a game or a certain thing you would like me to do a tutorial on don't feel like afraid to drop a comment down below leave a like on the video if you did enjoy obviously leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy it please subscribe and turn on those post notifications to see every video immediately when i upload them this has been seven peace out